Hello and greetings from the Delaware County Health Department. My name is Andrew Moyer and I'm going to teach you a bit more about genetically modified foods. When you think of genetically modified foods, also known as GMOs, you typically think of corn or tomatoes, but there's much more than that. People have been selectively breeding plants and animals to try and give certain plants or animals selected traits for centuries. In more recent years, this process has evolved enormously. Based on the current uprise of technology in the past century, scientists have been able to go into the actual genome of plants and other organisms and change them to whatever they desire. Genetically modified foods are the exact same things as regular foods, just with a couple of genes specifically chosen by scientists. To go where it all began, a Swedish physician named Frederick Meijer discovered the thing we know as DNA all the way back in 1869. Next in this genetic journey, scientists at Cambridge University named James Watson and Francis Crick discovered the structure of the DNA molecule, the double helix, which led to future scientists being able to manipulate different organisms' DNA. In 1973, researchers Herb Boyer and Stanley Cohan genetically modified an E. coli bacterium. The gene transfer was the ability to resist a certain antibiotic. This was the first genetically modified organism in history. Boyer and Cohan proved that transferring genes from one organism to another without breeding was possible. In this episode, we are just going to discuss genetically modified foods. If you want to see the video on genetically modified organism as a whole, click this video on the right. So back to the point, after lots of debate whether genetically modified foods on the, would be safe on the public market or not, it was finally improved, approved in May of 1994. Tomatoes under the name Flavor Saver were the first genetically modified foods to be introduced to the public food market. This type of tomato had a gene deactivated to allow it to have a longer shelf life. The absence of this gene stopped the production of polygalacturonase, an enzyme which softened softens fruit. Apparently, according to the Organic Consumers Association, these tomatoes did not taste good. Chris Watkins, a horticulture professor at Cornell University, said that the flavor, or the lack of, was due to the type of tomato from which they are developed. How ironic. These delicate tomatoes were very hard to package and ship without becoming damaged in the process. The production of these flavor saver tomatoes was also very costly. These factors led to the stop of the production of the flavor saver tomatoes in 1997. Still, pests would eat farmers' crops if they were left unattended. I mean, I doubt anyone would want to sit and guard an apple tree for unwanted guests. The U.S. Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that 20 to 40 percent of global crop totals are lost annually due to disease and pests. Additionally, the Environmental Protection Agency, around 5 billion pounds of pesticides are used globally each year costing more than $35 billion. It's a lot of money. So let's go back to 1995. The US EPA approved that the first insecticide producing crop, the crop that was engineered was the summer fall favorite, the corn. The corn was given genes from the Bacillus thuringiensis, a bacteria com commonly used in pesticides. Any crop genetically engineered with these Bacillus thuringiensis genes was classified as a BT crop. You may be curious on how this crop can kill insects, but not you. Well, it's kind of simple. Once the insects eat said BT crop, the crop would go through the gut as it normally would. Insects have specific protein receptors lining their gut. The toxins produced by the BT crop fit perfectly into these receptors. The toxins are only activated if they find the specific protein receptor. Once activated, it causes a hole in the cell's membrane, causing the cell to burst as a whole. The BT toxin is very unstable in the acidic stomach environment, in humans, for example. To make sure it was safe for human consumption, the EPA did a study where they gave mice high doses of purified BT toxin protein. The mice showed no sign of significant health impacts. The EPA concluded, there is no reasonability to certainty that no harm will result from aggregate exposure to the U.S. population, including infants and children. So unless you're some crazy human insect mutant, you should be safe from this variation of genetically modified foods. The GMO market skyrocketed. In the year 2000, the United States had 74.8 million acres of land dedicated to growing genetically modified foods. The main crops grown were soybean, corn, cotton, and canola. Second in this GMO uprise was Argentina, 
with 24.7 million acres of land. They focused on soybean, corn, and cotton. Falling slowly behind was Canada, using 7.4 million acres to grow GMOs. Worldwide, the soybean was the most popular plant. In 1999, it was planted in 53.4 million acres of land. In sequential order, corn was used 27.4 million acres, corn at 9.1 million acres, canola at 8.4 million acres, and the potato, squash, and papaya all at 0.3 million acres. In 2003, a caterpillar known as the Helicoverpa Z was found eating a genetically modified cotton plant. The caterpillar was expected to die as the corn was genetically modified with the genes from the Bacillus thuringiensis. Well, the caterpillar did not die. The caterpillar developed an immunity to this Bt toxin in less than a decade. These types of caterpillars increased in the population due to Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. This theory is when organisms with preferred traits are more likely to survive and produce offspring with that desired trait. The caterpillar's desired trait was the ability to resist this Bt toxin. The caterpillar survived and then produced offspring with this desirable trait. This spread the immunity of Bt toxin in this species of caterpillar. Some countries disagreed with the EPA's findings. Countries have banned genetically modified foods from being planted in their country. However, they can still receive imports from other nations. These countries include Albania, Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Georgia, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Macedonia, Malta, Montenegro, Netherlands, Norway, Portland, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, United Kingdom. Countries began on this GMO strike by filing ban on cultivation of Monsanto's maize, Mon 810. Cultivation meaning prepare and use land for crops or gardening. This is referring back to the genetically modified corn, the corn with the Bacillus thuringiensis genes in it. Monsanto is a multinational agrochemical and agricultural biotechnology corporation. They are the creators of this new breed of corn that was supposed to keep unwanted pests from eating their crops. The reason that these countries ban GMOs as a whole is because no one really knows how safe it is for human consumption. These countries ban GMOs before a new law in the United States required companies to label their genetically engineered products. This law was passed by Congress in July of 2016. Companies can show the GMO ingredients through printed text, symbol, or online links such as a QR code. The United States is very vague on what is required to require a label for a genetically modified food. There has to be a certain percentage of a GMO ingredient in the food to require a label. A total of 64 countries require a label no matter the amount of GMO ingredient in the product. Oh boy, another list, here we go. Australia, Austria, Belarus, Belgium, Bolivia, Bonzia and Herzegovina, Brazil, Bulgaria, Cameroon, China, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Ecuador, El Salvador, Estonia, Ethiopia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Kenya, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Mati, Malta, Mauritius, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Switzerland, Taiwan, Thailand, Tunisia, Turkey, Ukraine, United Kingdom, and Vietnam. <laughs> that was a long list. It's crazy to think how many genetically modified foods we eat daily without even noticing. In the United States alone in 2014, 80% of food sold is genetically modified. That is insane. We don't even know when we're eating a genetically modified food due to the vague law of the United States. A 2015 statistic showed that 70.1 million hectares were used to plant a biotech crop in the United States alone. As a side note, a hectare is equal to 2.471 acres or 10,000 square meters. The biotech crop include maize, also known as corn, Soybean, cotton, canola, sugar beet, alfalfa, papaya, squash, and potato. 
following the United States lead in genetically modified foods in order, Brazil has 44.2 hectares, Argentina has 24.5 hectares, India at 11.6 hectares, Canada at exactly 11 hectares, and China at 3.7 hectares. The genetically modified food industry has blown up in the past two decades. I find it amazing how researchers can discover so much information in such little time. No one 20 years ago would be thinking, no, I'm going to go to the store tonight and get some genetically modified corn for dinner. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to click this totally real video on the right to increase your knowledge.